Hello all, welcome to lectures of design of electrical machines and in this lecture we are going to understand the very important topic related with transformer design which is design of transformer tank with cooling tubes. Well, let us understand what are the objectives. Uh, objectives of this lecture is to understand need of improvements in heat dissipation in transformers. The second objective is to compare plain walled transformer tanks and tanks with tubes to apply plain tank surface heat exchange experimental results for design of tubes to analyze step by step procedure for calculation of number of tubes and last objective is to evaluate number of tubes required for a given transformer and design its arrangement scheme. At the end of this lecture uh, you will understand uh, what is the uh, transformer heat exchange that is in detail and uh, you will be able to calculate number of coulomb tubes required for a transformer tank and you will also understand what is the arrangement of these coulomb tubes. Before starting the actual lecture I would like to request you to just understand what are the prerequisites for this particular topic. So you must be aware of there are three basic modes of heat dissipation that is conduction, convection and radiation. There are some uh, types of uh, transformer cooling that is uh, different methods of transformer cooling. Then types of transformers on the basis of cooling that you must understand and at last major two losses which are responsible for creation of heat in transformer that is one is iron loss which we call that as a core loss and another one is copper loss which occurs in windings. So uh, before understanding the concepts related with uh, cooling tubes design uh, please go through these already covered concepts in design of electrical machines. Now here we are going to understand how actually the heat flows uh, from inside parts of the transformer up to the exact uh, cooling medium which is present at the outskirt. So the path of heat is uh, heat is generally uh, generated in actual electrical operations like you are having uh, current flows uh, in uh, windings as well as flux flows in cores of the transformer. So heat is generated over there and they are being called as a uh, heated spots uh, which are inner parts. So through conduction that heat comes at the outer surface which is in contact with oil. The next flow is through convection which comes up to the cooling oil. Then uh, through again convection that heat comes at the walls of tanks and the last flow is through convection as well as radiation wherever heat is exchanged with the outermost uh, medium that might be air, water, anything. Now uh, heat dissipation in transformer walls, uh, wall tanks is by convection and radiation as seen in the last stage. So for a temperature rise in plain wall tanks, total area of uh, vertical sides plus half of the cover is considered. So if you if you bring the transformer in front of your eyes, you can under, understand it's a kind of a cubicle where you have to consider vertical sides as well as half of the cover uh, when you are going to calculate uh, this number of cooling tubes. So in, in general for heat exchanges, these are the consideration required. But if the oil is in contact with top cover, then you have to consider the all uh, cover area. Another concept is because bottom of the transformer does not contribute a lot as far as uh, cooling activities are concerned. So bottom is neglected. So these are the uh, important concepts when you are actually starting uh, understanding the concepts related with uh, cooling tubes and overall heat exchanges. Well, let us understand what is the requirement of cooling tubes. Uh, it, it does not mean you are a transformer will not operate if you are if you are not having cooling tubes because for a simple transformers which are of low rating your oil filled inside the transformer tanks is enough to cool the inside parts. But what happens when your dimensions of transformers are increasing. Now why dimensions increase because uh, you are increasing the ratings of the transformer and accordingly your core size will change it will increase your amount of windings and all these things will be required will be higher. So overall dimensions of transformers are going to change and that you can imagine because you have understood the two types of transformers a very small distribution transformer up to very very large power transformers. So there you can understand the change in dimensions. Now what happens when 
your transformer size increases its dimensions are changing whatever heat is generated through all the operations inside transformer is not cooled uh, by or is not controlled by the actual present oil inside the transformer so there you have to have some again extra action over there and there is a typical scientific reason also for that because your volume and loss increase is proportional to cube of linear dimension in transformer but your surface area is proportional to square so ultimate conclusion is loss is to be dissipated per unit area increases with size and uh, heat dissipation conditions in large output uh, transformers are achieved with the help of cooling tube so the same uh, i have shown with the help of some small figure you can understand if, even if you remove those tubes you can treat that as a plain wall tank transformer if you add some extra tubes that will be a transformer with tubes now uh, how to provide cooling tube so provision of cooling tubes increases heat dissipating area so what happens exactly when we are adding cooling tubes so heat dissipating area increases earlier we were considering only area of transformer plain tank now there you have to consider uh, additionally the area of tubes also but there are some issues also because when you are adding tubes uh, to the transformer tank those tubes will act as a hindrance in between radiation action which is um, uh, where the heat is getting exchanged from uh, surface of the tank with external environment so as far as tubes are concerned you will not find any radiation ex heat exchange over there that happens only with the help of convection so while deriving uh, actual number of cooling tubes you have to understand that the second thing is uh, uh, columns of oil in tubes produce more effective heads of pressure and thus heat dissipation improves so this is a very positive point when you are adding tubes your uh, columns of tubes will be having some uh, uh, more effective heads of pressure and thus your heat dissipation uh, gets automatically improved the increase in heat dissipation is more than justified by increase in the surface area and thus for tubes typically we are considering additional 35 percent tube area uh, uh, to consider heat dissipation improvement by convection now this is the overall derivation uh, typically here you can understand uh, this I have tried to simplify with the help of uh, step wise only there it's a 15 16 step derivation is over there and uh, just try to understand overall steps of the derivation so you have to start from one experimental result which is very standard uh, no need to derive that and you have to understand your plain tank surface with radiation heat dissipation is 6 watt uh, per meter square degree Celsius and for convection it is 6.5 so overall it will be 12.5 and if you consider st as a area of the tank that will be totally 12.5 into st now uh, if you consider area of tubes is x times your area of tanks uh, and uh, as we have discussed in theoretical part you have to consider uh, improvement in areas of 35 percent your seventh step will give you loss dissipation by tubes by convection directly so it's 1.35 into 6.5 into x into st why here that six factor has gone because we have already discussed in tubes there is no heat exchange by radiation please understand then in eighth step you have to multiply that uh, in eighth step you have to consider the total losses means losses because of tanks plus losses because of uh, these tubes which are occurring uh, and then uh, uh, total area of the tank walls uh, uh, and tubes will be taken together and our aim in 10th stage is, is to calculate loss dissipated per unit area in 10th stage you can understand uh, it's a degree celsius in denominator so that if you consider some typical temperature rise theta over there uh, you can calculate rise in temperature with tubes theta as uh, now you have to bring here iron losses plus copper losses so it's a kind of uh, equating two sides of the equation so at one side you are considering losses in terms of uh, pi plus pc at another side you are considering losses in terms of heat that is heat uh, through tank heat through tubes so if you equate those sides you can defi definitely calculate the temperature uh, of the uh, temperature rise of the with the help of tubes and the theta will be given by stage number 11 and with the help of that you can calculate uh, value of x now x is nothing but this x factor you have considered uh, the, the area of tubes is x times uh, area of uh, transformers 
uh, tanks. So uh, in stage 12, you will calculate total area of tubes uh, with the help of uh, that is uh, you are simply multiplying. Uh, it, if you if you see refer step number five, here what has happened? Area of tubes is x into st. So you are multiplying that by st. That's why I have mentioned over there. You can refer step number five. Then let us consider length of each tube is lt and diameter of each tube is dt. So area of tube, it's a uh, the area of tube will be uh, it's a cylindrical surface. So it's a pi uh, lt into dt. So now in in stage number twelve we have got total area of tubes and in stage number fifteen you have got area of each tube. So from that you can calculate number of tubes which are required for a transformer. So our target is achieved in stage number 16. We are going to get uh, actual number of tubes required for a transformer. So uh, now let us understand actually arrangement of uh, cooling tubes because uh, now this is one of the example uh, I have taken from a very famous book uh, which is called as I have mentioned the name over there AK Sony. It's example number 5.24. And uh, what they have said, there is one transformer of 250 kV and uh, the rating they have given, the remaining details they have given. And uh, what they have said is the transformer tank is 1.25 meters in height and the remaining dimensions are 1 meter by 0.5 meter. Now design, uh, we have to design a suitable scheme for tubes. Uh, if the average temperature rise is to be limited to 35 degrees Celsius and the diameter of tubes is 50 mm and area spaced is 75 mm. So they have given a value of theta also. Uh, it's a standard 6 and 6.5 numbers uh, that uh, you have understood from theory. And again, assume that the convection is improved by 35% due to provision of tubes. So again, that standard 35% number is also same. They have given. So solution is very simple because we already understood the steps. My focus here is to let you know how to uh, decide the arrangement of tubes. So here you can understand stepwise they have gone and at the end they have understood uh, that uh, total number of tubes to be provided are 62. So if we get this answer 62 as a number of tubes, our motto is now to arrange these tubes. So how to arrange those? Here the dimension you have to focus as a plane that given in uh, example. So plane dimension is 1 meter so by 0.5 uh, meter. So see this. Now just focus on this uh, arrangement of tubes they have given. So in plane they have given 1 meter is 1000 mm into uh, 0.5 meter is 500 mm. Now another conditions they have given. One condition is uh, your tubes dimensions they have given. So diameter of tube is 50 mm and area spaced is 75 mm. So you can observe the diagram how they have arranged. So what they have done, the tubes are spaced at 75 mm apart. So 1 meter along the width of the tank, we can accommodate 12 tubes. So it may happen, you have to first divide 1000 by 12 and you have to decide how much uh, distance you have to keep at both the ends so that it should look symmetrical. So 90 mm you are keeping at both sides and remaining uh, you are going to accommodate how many tubes? 12 tubes at the dimension of 1000 mm. Similarly, at uh, another dimension of 500 mm, what you can do? 500 divided by, because you are going to keep the distance of 75 mm in each tube, you can divide it by 500 divided by 75. So here you can see in a vertical part, what you have done? Uh, uh, you have uh, in 0.5 mm along depth, we can accommodate 5 tubes with how much space? 100 mm space on each side. So our first uh, row is done so and because it is having it's a rectangular shape so 12 at this side 12 at another side uh, again uh, 5 at this side and 5 at another side so 2 into 12 plus 2 into 5 so 34 tubes have gone now total number of tubes available in our hand is 28 now how to decide their arrangement so here you can understand the 11 tubes can be provided in a staggered fashion so you can understand we are not putting 12 behind 12. So what we are doing? The 11 tubes we are putting in a staggered situation behind those 12 tubes. So 11 into 2. So 22 tubes again uh, they have gone. So remaining tubes are uh, if, if you see uh, if you see 
2 into 12 has gone. So 2 into 11 has gone. So 2 into 12 plus 2 into 11. So 24 plus 22 plus 2 into 5 plus 2 into 4. So 64 tubes will be there. So whatever answer we have we had got was a 62. But here answer is coming 64. This you can consider as a somewhat a safety margin or just uh, as a requirement of the design because similar things also happen you must be aware when you are calculating the lengths of the windings in transformer winding so uh, somewhere you may get it as a 10.55 or um, 10.78 so th those you are uh, converting into a nearest integer that is 11 so here what is happening even if my answer is coming 62 by this arrangement i have to put 64 tubes so two tubes are being put extra into the transformer and as far as design extra is okay it should not happen that you are uh, as per calculation you are putting some laser tubes so that your heat exchange of the transformer will be disturbed so here uh, what we have done again i would like to summarize we started understanding what is the heat flow of transformer from inside up to the outermost medium then we understood why cooling tubes are required in the transformer what is the exact difference between plain wall tank transformers and transformers with cooling tubes we understood uh, in cooling tubes exactly what happens because in cooling tubes again please take a note in cooling tubes we are neglecting the heat exchange through radiation and then we calculated uh, number of cooling tubes and uh, we have seen one example also plus arrangement so this this part is very important as far as the transformer design is concerned so my appeal to you is please do practice of numerical as well as understand the derivation thank you